Hey guys, we're finally back in the hardcore world. In between episodes, I've been a pretty busy guy doing a bunch of funny little tasks here and there. But before we get to that, I gotta show you something that I recorded from a mining trip. It was the mining trip where I got all of those ores that you saw me breaking down in the little time lapse just there. Long story short, I almost died. Check it out. Ooh, yeah, one and a half hearts, huh? <laughs> yeah, that one was a little bit on the scary side, as you saw. Uh, there's also some diamond ore there, which of course I cannot mine. But anyways, what have I been up to between episodes? I know it's been a while, I've done a bunch of funky little things. Well, first of all, I've moved these two guys from our little shroom over up into the top of our big shroom up here. Of course, I'm not gonna be able to breed these guys, so there isn't really any point in making a villager breeder. As we've discussed in episode five, I am gonna be indeed using the unlimited villager trading mod or whatever it's called to get unlimited trades from these guys of course I'm gonna be recording each one of the trades that I do on camera just for a little bit of legitimacy you know and of course if you're gonna have villagers you need a good source of emeralds and if we uh, go check our uh, <laughs> storage real quick uh, I kind of need a few more emeralds so I took a little bit of time to throw together a very little basic melon and pumpkin farm down here actually I know it's a little bit on the unconventional side throwing a melon and pumpkin farm right in the middle of our base here in the weird like stem area of course this is gonna be covered up we're not gonna have all this ugly cobblestone and redstone and crap down there permanently these guys are not gonna be particularly large or efficient or anything but they're gonna be running all the time because they're in our main base passively produce a little trickle of melon and pumpkin for us I think that'll be pretty nice I've also been running our moss farm a little bit and that has been producing a good bit of bone meal I think we're all out of bone meal for right now so I'm just gonna go Go ahead and turn those guys off. I've really just been taking all the output bone meal and then just feeding it back into the machines to make even more bone meal. And if we look, oh, oh, oh yes, that is a large amount of bone meal that, oh my god, that is going to be wonderful to have in our future builds and stuff. And of course, last but not least, I did a little mining trip. As you saw in the time lapse, I was breaking down all of our ores. We were running very low on iron after putting together that storage system. Been a busy little guy these past couple weeks. And as I'm sure you know, today is going to be a very special episode. I'd say it's about time that we uh, hop on over to the end and kill that little dragon. I've been really wanting to get my hands on elytra and shulker boxes and all of that other lovely stuff. Plus raiding end cities is going to be a really great way of getting diamonds and diamond gear. But if we are going to be doing that, we need a couple gear upgrades. I mean, my gear is decent, right? I got like protection four and stuff on these. I got feather falling, which is going to be incredibly useful for that dragon fight and stuff like that. I've been saving my pickaxes and stuff. I got three right here, but there's one crucial thing that I've been missing, which of course is mending. Without villagers, I haven't been able to mend any of my gear. So it's been really tough trying to repair it manually with the anvils and stuff, feeling like a boomer. And especially since I cannot mine diamonds, raw diamonds, like that are incredibly hard to come by and a limited resource pretty much so I really haven't been wanting to repair my gear and it's really showing like I'm not wearing my helmet because it is like five minutes away from breaking and it, it kind of terrifies me like where'd it go yeah 17 durability not looking so great I kind of need a uh, mending on that really bad I kind of want to wear a helmet if we're gonna fight the dragon you know so I think before we get to any of that fun little exploration and stronghold finding and dragon dragon fighting and all that stuff, we need to put together a very basic little villager setup right here. I've already got the lecterns, I think I want mending and unbreaking. How I'm gonna get all those emeralds is a different story entirely, but hopefully I can trade with the librarians or whatever. I'll figure all that out, you guys don't have to worry about that. I'll get back to you guys when I got a funky little shroomy, I don't know, villager kinda setup for these guys, and then we'll go from there. Little bit of villager wrangling later, and two guys. <laughs> oh my god, every single time I gotta deal with these guys, I just remember exactly how much I absolutely abhor dealing with you people. 
Yes, you people. But it's going to be worth it because we are all set here with unbreaking and mending. Admittedly, I already did a couple trades with this guy just to lock in his unbreaking three trade for only 12 emeralds. That is absolutely insane. Look at that. And uh, yeah, I didn't get that out on camera, unfortunately. I know literally the very first trades I do, I forget to record, but oh well. And this guy right here is our mending guy. I'm going to craft up some paper real quick and lock in this guy's trade. See folks, this is why you don't want to rely on manually repairing tools with diamonds. You get stuff like that when you really, really don't have the levels for it. Ugh. But oh man, does it feel good to finally have some mending and unbreaking on the tools that needed it the most. This axe of mine is pretty important to me and I'm very worried about losing it, so I think I'm gonna go take the time to not only farm up the EXP for that, but also I might as well expand our sugarcane farm while I'm at it. We'll definitely go back and and make an automatic sugarcane farm sometime in the future. I don't know when. Sometime. But for the time being, I don't really have the headspace to worry about an entire sugarcane farm right now, especially when we have an upcoming end raid and dragon fight and all that stuff, so let me just get all that taken care of. Maybe farm up a couple extra melons while I'm here. And I'll catch back up with you guys when I've got everything enchanted and good to go for our stronghold adventure. It's the next day in real life, and man, have I been busy. I went and wrangled some more villagers, which is uh, always a good time. I got attacked by two trident drowns while trying to wrangle the villagers, which was also a good time. Of course, I harvested a whole bunch of sugarcane, as you'd expect. I did a whole bunch of trading with the two new farmers that I got my hands on, plus, of course, the existing two librarians. And I even did some enderman hunting over in the nether, trying to get my hands on some ender pearls for, you know, actually getting to the stronghold and all that. That's going to be pretty important. <laughs> so yeah, I've been working hard and it's paying off. Because look at this, we got another little villager section right here. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be keeping all the villagers up in the cap of the big shroom with me. It's just kind of a, well, not a temporary thing, but I want to keep the most important guys, the guys I'll be trading with a lot, up here. So, you know, mending and unbreaking guys. And then my main source of emeralds, which are these two guys right here. These two funny little dudes. This guy's already a master. I traded away all my pumpkins and melons, as you saw in the little recap back there. This guy's still a novice. I locked in his trade. Hopefully he'll have like more interesting trades and whatever. That's the interesting thing about having unlimited trades, right? There isn't really any benefit to having more than one villager with the same trades because you can just keep trading. <laughs> so um, that actually is really great. It means I don't need to do as much villager wrangling. I don't need to do as much workstation breaking, which is always annoying. And yeah, I can really just focus on getting the stuff that I need. And speaking of getting the stuff that I need, mending, 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 mending. Uh, where'd the stuff go? Uh, mending. There we go. There's the other one. It feels so good to have a mending on all my tools and armor. Finally, or, uh, m most of my tools and armor. I'm still missing a few, but it's enough to go to the end with, and that's what's important. I've been prepping a little bit of like an end box over here. You know, we got the eyes of Ender, got a bunch of food, got my bow and arrow. It's it's kind of a crappy bow. I might try and do a better enchant before I leave because power two is really not going to give me much. Whole bunch of blocks. I've been prepping up some firework rockets because, you know, the last thing you want when you finally get your hands on an elytra is to uh, not be able to use it. <laughs> I have expanded my sugarcane farm a whole lot. If we want to hop on over to the lump, you can see the remnants of my villager wrangling. Probably going to leave that up for the time being. I think my, uh, what is that back there? Whoa, there's a guy up there. Hi. <laughs> see if I can get him down. Um, the village I've been taking all these villagers from still has, I believe, two more villagers I secured in one house. So, hi, buddy. How are you? Wow, look at your fancy gold armor. Fancy man in his fancy suit of armor. Now he's dead. But yeah, look at all this sugar cane. Oh, it's beautiful. It's fantastic. It's so big. In the past, I had to like swim around in the water all the time whenever I wanted to pick up all the sugar cane. I'm not sure why I didn't do this sooner. I think I just forgot that you could waterlog blocks and then they'd still be, you know, full of water and make sugar cane grow and everything because, oh my God, is this a million times more convenient to just be able to run around on top and not have to worry about diving into the water every five seconds to pick up sugar cane that you missed. I am, as the kids say, Stacking paper. 
<laughs> it's pretty great. Anyways, all that talking aside, I think it's about time we commence on our end stronghold locating adventure. Just give me a couple seconds to get all my gear in order, prep my ender chest, prep my inventory, get my ender pearls all situated, and I'll meet you guys outside. All right, we're outside of the main base here. Take a quick look at my inventory. This is exactly what I will be bringing into the end with me. Just gonna worry about the dragon fight for the time being. I definitely need different gear when we're gonna be raiding the end cities later in the video, but that's gonna be a separate trip. Hence why I'm bringing the obsidian and the flint and steel in order to make another portal over at the stronghold and light it. So we should be able to get back a little bit more easily. <sighs> okay, yeah, I know, I'm stalling. I'm a little bit nervous. Actually, JK, I'm considerably nervous. <laughs> that it's hardcore and everything. Uh, mainly worried about being, you know, knocked off the side or taking a lot of fall damage, missing an MLG, that kind of stuff. But there is only one thing we can do right now, and that's to cast the first eye. Here we go, gamers. That direction. Okay, interesting. <laughs> of course it goes on top of the tree. The very first eye, of course, it lands on top of a tree where I can't get to it without placing a bunch of blocks. Of course. <laughs> Alrighty, we are heading off in that general direction. Let's get traveling. Okay, it's over in this direction. Gotcha. And I made it mine shaft <laughs> three blocks down. All right, I'll take it, I guess, but that's not really what I'm here for. More mine shaft. Cool. <laughs> I feel like strongholds don't generate this deep normally, but I could be wrong. I mean, there is deep slate and whatnot now, so I guess it's possible it can generate all the way down here, but I feel like they don't do that. I feel like this is a little bit too deep. Oh, it's definitely not too deep for a stronghold generation, huh? All right, well, I'm definitely mistaken there. There we go, I spy. <gasps> Three diamonds, and the best part is I don't need to mine those diamonds, which means they are legit. Hmm, strange glitchy water. I'm just gonna ignore that. Yeah, this is so weird having a stronghold down in deep slate level. Like, I've never seen that before. Granted, I haven't done much, you know, end exploring uh, since 1.18, really just my 1.18 survival world, but still, it feels a little weird. <laughs> That's a... Uh, very useful door right there. <laughs> These iron bars are freaking out. I, I, I don't think that's healthy for an iron bar to do that. <laughs> Ooh, a library. That's pretty pu- <laughs> I was gonna say that's pretty pockers. Well, wants to get another useless door, uh, but I may have been interrupted by some lava. Let's see what we got here. Oh my god, a whole lot of books, a whole lot of paper. Lovely stuff. Definitely coming back here for more bookshelves in the future. Efficiency four, that's actually quite good. Wow, all right. I feel like I've been everywhere. I mean, there's no way I have, of course, but I feel like I've been everywhere. Well, like, should I, should I throw another eye maybe? Should I try and get like a general direction of where I'm trying to go? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Haven't gone back here. <gasps> there we go, yes, all right, one eye, all right, not bad, we've got 13 eyes. Just gonna seal that, actually, no, no, I want some space. Obsidian, ooh, that gotta make the portal first, that's very important. It's all come down to this. <laughs> ooh, actually, no, it's all not come down to this, I need to set my spawn. Now for the moment of truth, and I am really, really nervous, so if you can hear it in my voice, well, there you go, that's your explanation. But, uh, I really love this Minecraft world, and I really, really don't want to have to say goodbye to it here. But I think we'll be just fine, <laughs> is what I keep telling myself. Let's go! Dragon actually nowhere in sight, so I'm gonna start taking these guys down. Uh, hmm. Where, where is the dragon? Ah, there she is. All right. Missed you, buddy. It's been a while since I did this. If you remember in my last world, I did this with the help of some friends. So uh, I'm gonna be pretty rusty here. 
That was actually kind of cool. Ooh, you're not throwing that stuff at me, my friend. Gonna have to pillar. I suppose I'm just gonna have to pillar up. Let the dragon's breath dissipate. I am trying my best out here. <sighs> that dragon's breath does damage. Uh-huh, all right. Let's see, are there, there's one up there. Okay, I think that might be the last one. Just gotta run up there. I wonder if I can make that shot. Yes, let's go. All right, sick. I think that's all of them. <laughs> you got an army enderman chasing her. Nice. <laughs> you got fans, look at you. <laughs> you got an army of stands over there or something. What's going on? You wanna land? <laughs> you wanna land, please? Thank you. There we go. There we go. That's what I want. <laughs> Just destroying all the Endermen. Oh my god. Ooh, that's good damage. Oh, that's really good damage. Can I get this right here? Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Please. 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 No. <laughs> oh my god. Can I just... Yes. There we go. We still got more work to do. That's a really, really good first start. Oh, the EXP. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Gonna gather up all my EXP real quick, and I have to get the dragon egg, that's for sure. 67 levels. Oh my god. <laughs> that's fantastic. Okay, dragon egg has to be obtained, of course, the most important thing in the game. There we go. Okay, all you need to do is push it. Sick. Oh, <sighs> okay. Dragon. Defeated. <laughs> Let's get out of here real quick. Don't care about that. <laughs> and we are back at the stronghold. Whew. We have officially beaten the game, folks, but uh, we are not done with today's video. Today, we still have to go back and find some end cities, find some elytras, find some shulker boxes. Give me a moment to just take a little break, get back to my base, get the rest of my stuff, bring the rest of my stuff over here, and then we'll get right back to that. Whew. <laughs> I'm alive, boys. We did it. Okay, quick trip to the nether and back to my base and everything's all put away and all that and now it's time for the- oh I disappeared there for a second. Now it's time for the actual difficult part of this episode which of course is end city raiding. Definitely feeling a lot more confident this time around which is a little bit weird because this is definitely going to be a lot more difficult. The ender dragon fight, I mean it's 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 really not that difficult. <laughs> I was kind of overhyping it earlier in this episode really just because I was nervous. Now I'm feeling good. It's gonna- oh my god, I almost fell off right there! Oh, that would have been a quick trip, huh? Not coming back till we uh, get an elytra, or if we have to uh, delete the world, I guess. <laughs> Only one way to find out. Now I suppose there's nothing left to do but travel. <laughs> Let's cue the music one more time. Oh, uh, Hello? <laughs> that was fast? Wow. What? <laughs> oh my god. I, oh, there's a guy after me. Oh, ah, ah, there's a guy. Please, please, sir. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Alright, well anyways, wow, that is, that is incredibly lucky to find. I mean, it's a small end city, but it's got a boat! And that's what matters. It's got a boat. Look at it. Oh my god, I am so excited. I was really not looking forward to having to bridge like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of blocks and whatever. Maybe we just got really lucky with going in the right direction. Maybe we're just uh, lucky with our RNG and our world generation. I don't know, but regardless... We got a boat! Okay, wow, here we are. It's a tiny end city. I mean, this really doesn't even qualify as a city, but look, the boat is right there! I've never seen a city this tiny that actually still has a boat. It's kind of insane. Also, we haven't actually used our new bow. Of course, stealing as many end rods as possible. That <laughs> mushroom block looks so weird. <laughs> And there we are, boys, past this one final shulker. There she be. 
Ah, Elytra. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Oh my god, everybody's in my face. <laughs> We've got our Elytra, guys! Finally! Oh my god, this is really gonna open up the game for us. Protection for iron boots. That's not really worth it. I will take the golden iron for sure. So here's the thing, guys. I came prepared. And by prepared, meaning I brought an ender chest. And in said ender chest is an anvil with unbreaking three, which means we can just go ahead and equip that right now. In addition, I've got 45 rockets here. So, uh, yeah, we're just decked out with an elytra now. Oh my god, I can't believe it's already happened. That is insane, and I'm really excited to do more exploring. Gotta take the dragon head, of course. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> it looks like a hand cannon of some kind. It's funny. Okay, yeah, I don't think there are any more shulkers in this whole end city. Got a hot eight shulker shells in my inventory. I, we definitely need to go find some more end cities, so uh, I say we should go strap on our wings and just see what we can find. Of course, I've got a limited amount of rockets. I can't use all of them right away. I'll definitely have to find teleporter things or just save a few for my trip back. Oh my god, there's another end city right there. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> oh my god, this is a tiny one, of course, but still more shulkers, more loot potentially. Word from the wise, guys. As somebody who's raided end cities quite a few times in their day, oh, I'm not going in there, it's a little dangerous. Um, bring an anvil and an unbreaking three book with you. The minute you get your first elytra, go ahead and slap that enchantment on there. Bring some rockets with you, of course. It really makes end exploring a million times easier if you've got a pair of wings. Definitely recommend. Alright, let's go mess with these shulkers. Maybe I should have brought a little bit more than- Oh my, that's a good sword. Okay, protection for mending. That's a little bit less of good boots, but I think I'm going to take them anyways, just for the hell of it. It'll be kind of funny. Yeah, there's something off in the distance. Ooh, it's a big boy. Ooh, delicious. Not as concerned about, uh, you know, more boats and stuff. Obviously, more elytras is going to be really great. Uh, but the thing is, I mean, we're on hardcore, right? Like, I don't really need a, a backup elytra for if I die, because if I die, I die, then the world's gone. Not really as concerned about elytras as I would in a normal world. It's not like I'm having friends on the world or anything. So I'm mainly just concerned about the, the loot, to be honest. I mean, you know, shulker boxes and, of course, getting diamonds and all that. That's that's really what I'm focusing on right now. Ooh, I pearled. God. God. Oh, hate these stupid balls. <laughs> like that. Five diamonds and a decent pickaxe. Pretty nice. What is going on on that. <laughs> Another way to just make yourself a little bit less reliant on mending is to just use all the loot you get from the end cities here. It's quite a lot and it's actually quite decent. Assuming you're not the kind of person that, you know, cares about max leveling your gear and stuff, like, I, I don't care about that. As long as it's good enough for the job, then it's all good. Another nice thing to bring with you when end raiding is, of course, chests and a crafting table to make shulker boxes. <laughs> now I can store basically as much gear as I want without really having to worry about inventory space like you can with shulker boxes. So I can kind of just dump all this stuff in here and not have to worry about crowding up my e-chest. Well, I gotta say that was an incredibly flawless end city run, easily the most smooth and disaster free end city trip I have ever made. If you've seen my old 1.18 survival series, you will know that uh, the old end city raiding with my friends in that series uh, didn't go quite as well. So yeah, really, really huge, oh my god what happened there, huge relief to have that go incredibly smoothly. And, you know, I could be greedy and try and find another end city and, you know, push my luck a little bit, push the amount of rockets that I have. But to be honest with you guys, I think I've been through enough stress today. I'm going to just play it safe and return home. We've got a whole bunch of loot. I got to figure out. Oh, hi. Hello. Okay. Bye, sir. Oh, no, he's coming back. He's coming back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ooh, wow, that guy did damage. That was really close. Jesus. Okay, you have to remember, much squishier with the elytra on. 
<laughs> Anyways, guys, I am going to head north, which I believe, yeah, that's the direction we were coming from. Gonna bring myself back to the overworld, bring all my stuff back to the base, and then we'll talk about the big haul from the end cities once I get back. We have made it. We have returned back to the overworld once and for all. Actually, we'll probably go back to the end sometime soon to make like an enderman farm or something. But for the time being, we are back in the overworld. Let's take a look at our haul from all of this end stuff. Back at our base and pretty much everything of value that we got from all that end rating is right here in this chest. Let's take a look. First of all, I mean, we got ourselves an elytra, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Unfortunately, we only got one, but as I said, I don't really think I need more than one for right now. Maybe I'll get another one in the future, but for the time being, Elytra's great to have. Five shulker boxes, the capability to make 12 more shulker boxes with the two dozen shulker shells, whole bunch of diamond gear and stuff, a saddle, couple diamonds, a bunch of iron and gold, a few potions, lots of end rods, a good amount of ender pearls, dragon head of course, can't forget the dragon head. Overall, for only having looted three end cities, I mean two of them being pretty tiny, that's pretty, pretty dang good, I have to say. <laughs> I'm very impressed, and more so, I'm just incredibly impressed with how smoothly everything went. That was incredibly quick, incredibly efficient, no problems whatsoever. <laughs> it seems after the 7th or 8th time, I'm finally actually learning how to rate densities, so <laughs> that's pretty cool, I guess. Ah, <sighs> feels good to be back. It is once again a new day IRL. I put all my stuff away, I did a whole bunch more villager trading to get some more enchanted books, I've got all my tools and armor all repaired. I got a trident now, so <laughs> that's pretty cool, I guess. Oh god. <laughs> it doesn't actually come back to me yet. Okay, one second, hold on. I need to go get that. <laughs> Pillaring up with gilded blackstone. Sick. There we go. Yeah, I, I really gotta put loyalty on that. And as you can see, it's just about the end of the episode, but before you go anywhere, hold on, hold your horses. We're not going anywhere just yet. I figured, uh, ah, I figured that it would be a great way to finish off this episode by building an elytra landing pad in our base. We've got this really amazing big shroom that we put together in episode four and five, I believe. And unfortunately, there's only really one way to get inside it, which is of course, course through the water elevator, and now that we got our hands on an elytra, I feel like we should be changing that. I've got a pretty cool design in mind that I just kind of whipped up real quick in a creative test world. I'm gonna go and put that together, so why don't we finish off today's episode with a mini time lapse. All right, we got ourselves. So oh, oh, never mind. I I didn't break the scaffolding. <laughs> One second. Okay, now we've created a cool little elytra landing pad. You might have noticed in the time lapse, if you have a bit of a keen eye, that I was messing around with the pressure plates here, and uh, originally I was gonna have them, but for a while there I actually removed them from the design, replacing them with item frames because I realized, and this is something I didn't catch when I was prototyping this in creative mode, is that if I were to step on these, they would open the trap doors, and then there's a very good chance of me just like falling through, <laughs> which uh, obviously is not great. So I replace the pressure plates with invisible item frames, and that's how I've got the copper on there. But then later, just for fun, I put the pressure plates back, and check it out, they actually stay depressed because of the item frame that's kind of inside them. And because item frames count as entities, it seems like that the item frame is actually pushing down the pressure plate. It was a really, really cool accidental solution to a problem that I didn't even realize I had. But anyways, besides that, I think this is looking pretty good. It blends in with the style of the big room behind me, and of course we got this cool little arch back here when the jungle wood blends into the mushroom blocks that are making up our floor. Taking a quick trip to the skies with our new elytra, we can really get a wonderful view of our shroom from the distance, and man, that looks really great. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Overall, it's just really wonderful to get a view of our base. It looks a lot smaller now, of course, unfortunately, but it's really great to get this cool aerial view of everything we've built thus far in the world, you know? Like I was talking about in the very beginning of our series with the world plunged into darkness, you can really see the tiny little sliver of light and warmth that we've been able to carve out in this otherwise very dark, very gloomy world. This place is really starting to look like home, you know? Between the 
shrooms and the trees and the pathways, it's become a really wonderful little place. And as we make our way down to our new Elytra landing pad, I think it's just about time to call this episode finished. Thank you for joining me today on my adventure through the end, killing the Ender Dragon, raiding end cities, and of course flying around the world with our brand new wings. If you enjoyed the video, a like on it would be very much appreciated as it does definitely help out smaller channels like mine in the spooky scary YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you are not subscribed, consider doing that as well. Until next time, my dudes, this has been Leon, and I will see you all in the next Minecraft Random Hardcore video. Take care, my friends.